All right. So hope you all enjoyed last episode. It was uh, just kind of my personal story of going through COVID with my wife and her family and all that fun stuff. And realistically, that's what prompted me to get out of the medical field. Not really our story, but just kind of everybody's, just the whole way it was handled. And I left out a lot of things. And, and I kind of mentioned them in our first episode back where I had to hire an attorney to keep my job and things like that. So I just didn't, it, no, it's not worth it. To me, it's not worth it. Not for the money I made, not for the stress, the headache, and, and just the crap we went through. So I'm out, I'm done, and I feel better. So moving on, new episode. Here we go. Might be a little noisy. I'm sorry. Supposedly, allegedly, there's a hurricane hit in Southern California. To me, it looks like a nice summer storm. But hey, what do I know? I'm not a weatherman. But with that being said, uh, you might hear a little bit of noise. I'm in my garage, and I got the garage doors open. I've got rain happening. I've got my air conditioner going because it's hot and humid. And I got a, air fa- a fan blowing on me to keep me cool, too. So it's just it's miserable right now. According to the weather report, it is 85 degree or 85 percent humidity, 78 degrees, and it's raining. It's ugly. It's nasty. So uh, we got prepared by going to lunch. All right, sorry, to the matter at hand. I was. I don't know why I got on this subject. Uh, oh, there was there was. Um, I was kind of laughing at myself or what I do with myself and my brain when I can't think. And that actually happens a lot. Not the brightest. But what I'm talking about is with ADHD. I've never been diagnosed, but every symptom is there for me. It's really hard for me to focus. It's hard for me to stru- um, to read And it's not that I'm a bad reader. Reading is very easy. I read way above. I've always read above my level, at least back in grade school and stuff. But it's hard for me to retain it. And that was one of the things I struggled with for years was comprehension because my brain wanders too much. And I'll read one, two sentences and then squirrel. I'm on something else in my brain. I still do that to this day. And so I struggle with it. And I think that's part of the reason why I never went to college can't say I never went. I did some college, but I could never study. And it was hard for me because I couldn't study because I couldn't stay focused. I'd rather be doing other things or my brain would just squirrel out and go somewhere. And so I wanted to see if, uh, on a whim, right? I, I just wanted to see kind of like the correlation between first responders and ADHD and something, you know, smartphones and Instagram. Before I even thought about it, or while I was thinking about it, but never even mentioned it, I saw a reel on Instagram that showed this guy talking about ADHD and how it's actually, or it was beneficial to humans back when, like when we had to actually hunt and gather and do things like that. And so the ADHD allowed us to focus on going for the meal that we're looking for, the food that we're looking for, but at the same time being able to protect ourselves. And I'm going to get into that in a little bit. But in in short, that kind of triggered in me like, hmm, you know, as a first responder, we have to multitask. Well, what's multitasking? It's focusing on multiple things at one time, hence attention deficit. And it's not that it's necessarily a deficit, it's just, Focusing on multiple things, multitasking, right? Which is really how I see it. But so going back to my personal thing, even trying to write this show out, I was writing my show on something totally different, got a paragraph in and completely squirreled it over to this episode. So I don't even know if that episode is going to happen just because I pretty much wiped it clean and started over. And this is what came out of it. So thinking about ADHD and first responders, I Googled it. That's all I Googled, ADHD and first responders. And let me tell you, I was not disappointed. I was not disappointed at all. So if you're wondering if you have it, we're going to go over some numbers. 
But to get straight to the point, because I hate it when people do that, you probably have it. So let's do dive into a little history, shall we? Discovered in 1798 by a Scottish doctor named Sir Alexander Crichton. In 1932, a German doctor, what is it? he discovered and labeled it hyperkinetic disease. And it was mostly affecting children. Uh, the, the signs were they can't sit, can't sit still, you can't follow the rules, disturbing the classroom, problems getting along with other kids, and it started around the age of three, and then they found it peaking around six and starting to resolve a little by seven. So it was a very short period of time, which if you think about that for a minute, we put kids on it for years. So uh, in 1968 is when it actually became a disorder or when they um, – uh, when they finally labeled it as a disorder, right? By 1994, the American Psychiatric Association have labeled three different types of ADHD. I'm not going to go over them because they're all kind of similar. But uh, th- there was three in 1994. What was interesting, and, and a lot of people will say, oh, well, and, and this ties into um, a lot of the theories that Vaccine causes. Vaccines, not COVID vaccine, but vaccines cause autism and things of that nature. And they're trying to tie it into ADHD as well. Again, I'm not saying I believe one way or another. I'm just simply stating a lot of people think that the vaccines are creating autism and ADHD and things of that nature. Uh, If if anybody of age remembers, uh, there was an actress, and of course now I can't think of her name, But she's big, big on it. Big, big, big. Fighting for it. Fighting, fighting, fighting. These are causing uh, autism. And everybody thinks she's a kook and everybody thinks she's a a, a crazy woman. But, you know, I hate to say it, but, I mean, there could be some. There could. There could be some credibility to what she's saying. And when you start looking into it, things look kind of odd. Not saying they do. I'm just saying it looks kind of odd. But we're kind of veering off from where I was going. Let's focus back around. Scrolled out. There has been a 5% increase in ADHD from 2003 to 2011. It increased every year. It increased 5%. Now, here's my thing. I truly believe that it's overdiagnosed. And I didn't even, shouldn't even say it that way because that's not a proper way to phrase it. I think it's... How can I word it? Doctors put that label on kids, mostly boys far more often than they should. And I think part of the reason is, is parents are looking for an answer as to why my kid is out of control. 4.4% of U.S. adults have it, and 62% are men. That's actually a lot of women. I didn't think women were that often diagnosed with it because it's very rare in females. Maybe they don't choose to identify as a woman, and so now they have it. But I'm, I'm here all week. Um, but here's the thing, right? Like, you didn't, back in my day, back in the 70s, 80s, you didn't see a lot of ADHD. So what changed? Now, we could say, okay, well, the vaccines changed it. We could say the diets changed it. Or we could say even technology has changed that. Because you take two kids, put them in a room with tablets all day long, and then you want them, and then you wonder why they're bouncing off the walls in the classroom because they can't focus. They're not doing what they want to do. They haven't gotten that energy out. We've lost track of putting kids outside and letting them run around and get the energy out. Case in point, my niece, who's in middle school, has PE like once or twice a week. That's it. I had it every single day. We did PE every single day. And you take a grade school teacher. My wife, for example, is a grade school teacher. If you ask her, if the kids get out to recess for 15, 20 minutes and they come back in, they are far more behaved. They're more likely to sit in their chair. And they're able to focus better. So what is it? Do they have ADHD or are we not getting that energy out to get them to settle down a little bit? 
I think that's kind of a case of both. I think most kids have ADHD, but when you wear them down a little bit and let them get that energy out, they can sit down and focus better. So I just think, and I've said this before, and I've talked to a lot of, I mean, you guys know, obviously I'm in the medical field. I talk to a lot of physicians. I talk to a lot of nurses and this and that, and they agree with me. A lot of them do. Not all, but a lot. And don't get me wrong. I do believe there are kids with ADHD that are off the charts. My friend has a, a son who went through the roof on the charts, and he was only halfway through, or halfway through the test, and they were like, he's severely off the chart. I get that. It happens sometimes. But I don't think it's as common as we think it is. I think it's just rambunctious kids that need to go outside and play, which we are not allowing them to do, or we're not forcing them to do. And I really do think that's an issue. But... As adults, what do we do? We're already tired, but there's there's ways to, to work with that and, and deal with it, and we'll go over that in a little bit. But again, going back to my Google search, I did find that in 1997, FEMA had written a paper called Dealing with ADHD and Emergency Services. I thought that was interesting. I didn't realize that it was that big of a deal or that predominant. And if you go into that uh, paper, it gets really interesting. because, And most of it's for or was meant for management to how to handle your employees who have it. I thought that was kind of interesting. It actually is now considered a disability by the Americans, uh, Americans with disability. So if it's a disability, I'm curious, um, can I file for disability? Not work. Or can I get my um, handicap plague placard so I can park in the handicap spot? I'm just asking. It's legit. Anyways, this paper uh, written by FEMA, it stated that, quote unquote, research has verified greater percentages of fire and EMS are five to six times that of the general population will have ADHD characteristics. And it just said a greater percentage. It didn't give the percentage, or if it did, I didn't see it. Five, you are five to six times more likely to have it. But at what percentage? Even just taking a 5 to 6% chance greater is quite a bit. But, let, you know, I mean, you take it for what it's what it's worth, right? I mean, do you have it? I think it's good. And we'll go. I'm going to go over that in just a little bit too. But it usually presents it, it. You know, most of the time when you see ADHD, it's presented as a problem. And obviously it's considered that because it's a disability. It's listed as a disability. Why is it a disability? Because you can't focus on something for too long? How is that bad? I mean, think about it. If you're on scene, you're in a chaotic scene, right? I can't tell you how many times I've been in, whether it's like an active shooter situation or we haven't found the shooter yet, or you've got an MCI working that you've got four or five patients that you're going to have to tend to, whether you like it or not. Who knows, right? But think about it, right? So you're on scene, you're, 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 you're treating this patient, and maybe you're driving, but you're still treating. And so... What I mean by that is you're on scene, you're treating this patient, and you're getting ready to transport. In the back of your head, you're already starting to think, where am I going to transport? How am I going to treat this guy? Which hospital is most appropriate? Oh, my gosh, this guy needs a tourniquet. Okay, the hospital is most appropriate is XYZ. Oh, that tourniquet's not working too well. I need to tighten it down. Well, maybe, well, what about this patient over here? It looks like he might be crashing. We need to work on this guy, and let me focus on him. And if he's crashing, then what patient, what hospital do I need? You see what I'm saying? Like all these things we start thinking about. And it's not just, we can't get that tunnel vision. So is ADHD bad? Is it bad for a first responder? I don't think it is, to be honest with you. I think it's the opposite. I think it's actually really good for us. Because in reality, if you really need to focus on something, we usually can. We can find a way to do it. But when you're doing healthcare and we're in emergency services, at least... I shouldn't say healthcare. When we're in an emergency services, whether we're doing first responding or even ER, things moved and changed so fast that you have to be able to change your thinking in a hurry. You have to be able to switch gears immediately, right? It keeps us alive. If you're having to watch over your shoulder, you're having to keep, what is it, keep your head on a swivel? If you got to keep your head on a swivel, how are you going to do that without ADHD? Because you've got to stay focused on your patient. You got to be looking around what's happening, what's happening all around you. So there's this great, there was an article written by a guy named Peter Turner, found it online, and it's basically the hunter versus farmer theory. 
and it's basing it off of our ancestors and what they had to do. And the traits were results-oriented, right? Life-saving techniques, search and rescue, okay? Tireless, you're able to stay up and focus. Who does that sound like? You're scanning for threats. Who's a threat? Who isn't? Ways to escape. What's that? Head on a swivel slash scene safety, right? You got to be flexible. Adapt and overcome. That's got EMS and fire and law enforcement all wrapped into one. That's what we, that's our, literally our job is that. And that's that of a hunter. And that's the things that hunters had to do when they were out hunting for food. Self-explanatory. But again, how is it negative, right? It keeps us alive. It allows us to manage multiple patients at one time. We, you know, like I said, you're planning your, your, your patient care or you're driving, you're communicating with dispatch, you're ordering resources, you're canceling resources, you're assessing your patients, you're trying to decide what's the best way to extricate them. Can we extricate them? Do we need to, you know, are we, what kind of meds are we looking at? What's going to happen when we free them? You know, what if you have a crash injury and they've been there for, you know, 45 minutes or whatever, you know, all those things that go through our heads, those are, how is that bad? Those are things we need to work on. Now, obviously, if you can't focus on one thing because it's so bad, then yes, it could be an issue. But I think for most of us, especially in EMS, we've learned to control it enough and, and manage it to where we're able to do that stuff. And it's not a big deal. And I think it helps us, to be honest with you. But that also explains why ADHD is more prevalent in males. Males and our ancestors were the hunters and the gatherers. And the women were the farmers. They were the ones that got the food, right? And they took the food and they made the food and they picked the crops. And, hey, I need a tomato for tonight's dinner or whatever. That's what they did. And that's, it's for lack of better, evolution, right? In a way, but it wasn't even really evolution. It was just ingrained in us. It's just the skills that we were given. I don't know. That's, that's, that's just some of the weird stuff that I found that I thought was pretty interesting. In fact, I'm going to keep reading into that because I, I found it so intriguing about first responders and how much information there really was for first responders with ADHD. So a study in 2019 also found that people with ADHD were more likely to start a business or were alpha males. <laughs> started my own business. Kind of interesting. That study was from 2019, though. I would have thought they would have done that sooner. There was a book titled The Edison Gene, and it's by Tom Hartman. And it showed how uh, ADHD characteristics were actually a positive trait. And one, of the things, uh, one of the things mentioned in there were some of the people that have been known to have, and they, they, they were very careful with how they worded this, but they said these are people that had ADHD characteristics. And so they weren't diagnosed is what I'm guessing. They were just, they had these characteristics, which is what I'll say. I have those characteristics. But uh, just a few names that were interesting. Uh, Walt Disney, Richard Branson, Thomas Edison, and Albert Einstein. Those are just like the top ones that people would know. And I thought that was interesting that these are the guys that did it, right? I mean, we all know Walt. Richard Branson, uh, I believe he owns Virgin Atlantic Airlines, I think owns multiple companies, right? Because he can't focus on one. He needs multiple things to keep that brain working. Thomas Edison, brilliant. Albert Einstein, brilliant, right? Uh, earlier I had said about a friend of mine who has this kid whose ADHD is off the charts. And if I remember the story correctly, there's like 18, they do like 18 different steps within this test. And by the time they got halfway through, he had been already diagnosed with ADHD. They were like, no, he didn't even make it to the ninth step before we knew he was way off with ADHD. And so they've given him, you know, they gave him ways to combat it because he didn't want to put him on medication, which I completely understand. And, but this kid from a very early age was very, very intelligent. And one of the things that blew me away, even at four or five, I can remember this kid would come up to me and, and they call me uncle. He said, hey, uncle, I have a question. What do you do for work? And I'd tell him, he's like, oh, did you go to college for that? And we'd have this conversation, and you felt like you were speaking with, like, a teenager or older. And I was just looking at my friend, like, is this for real? And he's like, yeah. And we started realizing that this kid was, he was actually able to read. He was able to stay focused enough to read when it was something he wanted to read. But the retention this kid had was straight-up genius level. 
And what I mean by that is I can remember we were out one time having dinner together and his, this boy was at the time eight or nine, maybe 10. And he goes, Hey, uh, Hey dad, do you remember in the Harry Potter book series when so-and-so did this or this or that? He was like, no. He's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's in the third book in like the fourth chapter. But that was something he could do to focus and quiet his brain was reading, which is blew my mind. Cause I can't read. It does not quiet my brain whatsoever. My brain is squirreled all over the place. But, yeah, so ADHD first responders, I talked to somebody recently in on Instagram, and he, he deals with it, and he deals with a lot of other PTSD and ADHD, and I didn't get his permission to say his name, and so I won't. And all this stuff was actually just personal stuff, right? We were just talking back and forth. But I've seen his posts, and, and so we communicate a little bit. And one of the things that he likes to do is he likes to draw. That's his thing is drawing. So when he wants to quiet his brain down, he just goes and draws. It's cool. And we got to talking, and I felt kind of weird about mentioning this for myself because I kind of feel like a Ricky Rescue when I talk about it. But one of the things I like to do is to, well, I'll get to that in a sec. I like to work in my garage, right? A lot of people are like, hey, man, are you going to turn your garage? Because I bought a house about two and a half years ago. Like, you going to turn your garage into a man cave? I'm like, no, man caves are for people who don't have skills. That's my theory. Sorry. If you have a man cave and you don't have a garage, it's because you don't have skills. I have skills. I work on my house. I work on my cars. I do things, clean guns, whatever. I have to be doing something. I, I'm a hands-on kind of person. I don't need a man cave. My man cave is my garage, but my garage has tools. I don't even have a TV. I bring an iPad if I want to watch something on there, but usually I just flip on some music because I need some type of background noise. But here's the, here's the thing. Here's the Ricky Rescue part. I like to listen to Dispatch. I listen to dispatch of a local department that I know the area of, and I'll just put it on in the background. And I know it sounds like a Ricky Rescue thing, but hear me out. What it does is it allows my brain to focus on that. It focuses on who they're dispatching, and then I'm starting to focus, okay, dispatch, they sent out medic engine, whatever, nine. Medic engine nine, is going to this address. Oh, yeah, that address is up over here, and then they went here, and then they probably took this route, and then you hear them on scene, you hear them give size ups, and then you start thinking, okay, well, if I was there. And so, again, it's it's not that I wish I was there. It allows my brain to stop going crazy because I'm focused on it. If I'm cleaning my guns, I'm not really focused. It's torn apart. I'm just wiping it down cleaning it, lubing it, whatever, put it back together, I'm done. Same with doing something in my house. Now, if I'm doing something in my garage that requires a lot of focus, like if I'm trying to build something, yeah, then I have focus and I don't really need to be listening to whatever, trying to keep my brain because I've got to focus on measurements, things like that. That's why I like, that's why I like doing that is because it keeps my brain focused on one thing and not wandering. I hate it when it wanders because then I want to do 10 million different things and I can't. There you go. So if you're thinking if you you think you probably have it, you probably do. It is really, really common in our industry. It is not uncommon. But again, I think, honestly, I think that's part of the reason we get into it. And I want to look into some other reasons why. That may be a future episode. But the, the, the ADHD, I think, is something that helps us with our job. And so I think if you find these guys who are good, You find a medic or a fireman or somebody who's really good at what they do. I think that's why. I think for us, that's just something that makes our job click. And so I think that's why we do the job we do, right? It allows our, it it actually helps foster our ADHD. And not necessarily foster, that's not the right word, but we can use it to our advantage. And I think that gives us a, a, a very good advantage. And I think that's why we see... You know, a lot of these people who are book smart, right? Take a book smart EMT or a book smart paramedic. They're good at the books, but they're not good at the field work necessarily. And I'm not saying everybody or all the time, but most of the time you have two types. You have those who were book smart, top of the class, probably weren't the best EMT or paramedic. You have the guys who were right in the middle who did B average, you know, B or C even. And you put them in the field and they're rocking it. Why? Because it's that ADHD kicking in and it allows them to 
think quickly about the book and then go, but that's not going to work here. And I need to do this. And I think that's where it helps us. Honestly, you can call me out on that if you want, but that's just my personal opinion. That's my two cents. It's my podcast. I'll talk about whatever I want, say whatever I want in my opinion. Anyways, that's all I have for you. That was my two cents on ADHD. Uh, but if you're bored, go listen to some old episodes of this show. You can find them on Spotify. If you're really bored, go look up ADHD and first responders. I don't think you'll be disappointed. Like I said, I Googled it and was just blown away by how much information was on there. It's pretty interesting. It explains a lot. So other than that, I got nothing more for you. Have a good one. Keep lounging.